Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about how Jurassic Park 3 forever changed the way we all think about the Spinosaurus. So before the release of the third Jurassic movie, there were plans to replace the series' favorite T-Rex with a much more menacing and different looking predator. This idea would actually lead to the filmmakers picking Baryonyx as the dinosaur that would be the main antagonist in the film. And they even tested that dino out with a new silver logo. However, these plans would ultimately fall through, and Jack Horner's input of the much larger Spinosaurus would instead be what was used in the end. Now, the reason this decision was so important to not only the Jurassic Park franchise, but also the public's perception of dinosaurs as a whole, was because it drastically altered what many people believed that sailbacked animal to be. If you go back in time to around the 1990s, or maybe even a little earlier, you could find depictions of the Spinosaurus in dinosaur media if you looked hard enough. While nowhere near as popular as the Tyrannosaurus Rex or Triceratops, the Spinosaurus did in fact play a role in many educational paleontology books back in the day. I myself remember the Spinosaurus being shown as a much smaller and actually minuscule animal with a more megalosaurus styled skull when I was obsessed with the first two Jurassic movies. For a long time, this is kind of how most people saw the Spinosaurus, not much more than an upright standing Dimetrodon in some cases. But of course, that all changed with Jurassic Park 3. Now, what's actually pretty funny to talk about before that film came out in 2001 was the fact that Spinosaurus had actually made quite a few appearances in the franchise before then, even as far back as 1994 in a special Jurassic Park poster that was dedicated to the first movie, two short-snouted Spinosaur dinosaurs can be seen depicted on early JP-1 era merchandise. And of course, it would later get its own Kenner toy to go alongside the release of The Lost World, again, being much smaller than what the real life animal would be. Warpath was probably the last time that this dinosaur would pop up in the franchise before its radical redesign in the third movie. And even here, it's shown to be considerably smaller than its much shorter relative the Sukumimus. The ultimate idea that Jack Horner and Joe Johnston's crew were working on while developing Jurassic Park 3 was for a bigger and meaner dinosaur to come in and kill the T-Rex in a pretty shocking battle. Horner got to work on JP3 far more extensively than he did on any of the other movies that have been made in the franchise so far. And his early development with the conceptual stages in the film are what more than likely led to the Spinosaur being the prime candidate for JP3's plot. In his own words, this thing could literally cause an extinction on the island, and that's pretty much the direction the series went in. So once Spinosaurus replaced Baryonyx on Jurassic Park 3, concept artists like Crash McCreary and Ricardo Delgado began working on illustrations and storyboard ideas for the new animal. The decision to give the audience an authentic looking Spinosaurus, which hadn't really been done before in any dinosaur media to speak of, is what really led to the animal becoming recognized as it is today. This was the first major depiction of the Spino where a whole lot of people saw that crocodilian-like snout and the massive stature that the animal had in comparison to other theropod dinosaurs. It was also here where many fans of the Jurassic franchise got to see a much more aquatic animal, as well as one that would take on and fight what were previously the big bad carnivores of the series. Before Jurassic Park 3, the general public really didn't think of the Spinosaurus in this way. Without this creature's introduction and design in that movie, it's highly unlikely that anyone would look at the animal the way we currently do in the present. In fact, if it wasn't used in any of the Jurassic movies, it's highly unlikely that the dinosaur would even be as well known by the public. But because the filmmakers chose to bring it to the big screen in the early 2000s, the dinosaur's popularity would obviously skyrocket. And with that popularity, the common idea that this creature was not only bigger and meaner than the T-Rex, but that it could easily dispatch that animal whenever it saw fit. After Jurassic Park 3 came out, there were tons of moments in video games and other media that replicated the Spino vs. Rex fight, with a sailed back animal usually coming out on top. While that definitely wasn't something that a lot of people liked, you can't deny the incredible impact that the movie had on the dinosaur's much more accurate look and behavior. 
Now as always, this video wouldn't be possible without the support of my awesome game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Their continued support has really been a lot of help to me when making this stuff, and I never want them to ever forget it. So a big thank you to each and every one of you for watching this video. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like and hope you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in seeing me again. I'll see you all in the next one guys, and as always, take it easy.